work on the mosque continued during the times of the states that subsequently took control of the region. A new age dawned in the 16th century when the Ottoman Empire took over the whole of the Arabian Peninsula and the Middle East during the time of Sultan Selim I. The region containing Mecca and Medina became known as the province of Hijaz. The holy lands, including the sacred city of Mecca, remained under Ottoman rule for many years. The Ottoman Empire ruled over vast expanses of territory at that time, but took a particular interest in the Hijaz and was very careful about the protection and development of these holy lands. During all the architectural work that took place around the Kaaba, they were careful never to construct any building that was taller than it. The way that Sultan Abdul Hamid II had special materials used for the Hijaz railway to reduce the noise of the trains is one example of this respectful attitude. The Ottoman Sultan's attitude toward Mecca and Medina was that they were their servants rather than their rulers. For that reason, all the Sultans after Selim I enjoyed the title Khadim al Haramayan al Sharifayan, meaning Servant of the Two Holy Cities. Throughout the time they ruled over the region, the Ottoman sultans embodied that title by discharging that responsibility they had assumed right down to the finest detail. In the time of Sultan Selim II, the wooden ceilings of the great mosque were taken down and replaced with marble domes, over which were placed golden crescent moons. Later on, in the reigns of Sultans Ahmed, Abdul Hamid I, Murat IV, Mahmud II, and Abdul Majid, Various different sections of the Great Mosque were restored and new parts added on around. Five hundred new small domes in the Turkish style were added onto the renewed arches. The nineteen existing doors were restored. Oil lamps in the form of trees were located all around the passage for circumambulation.
The works of famous architects and masons of the time can be seen in today's Kaaba and its surroundings. Even though Mecca was covered by desert, before the revelation of the Qur'an, it has always been of strategic and commercial importance because of its geographical location. It was also highly respected due to the fact that it was home to the Kaaba. For that reason, Roman and Byzantine emperors and kings of Persia and Abyssinia all attempted to make this holy city part of their own territories. Yet, no external attack or invasion ever succeeded in capturing the city of Mecca. God has always protected these holy lands against their enemies. He has made the Kaaba a place of safety ever since the time of its construction by the prophets Abraham and Ishmael. This feature of the Kaaba is revealed in verses. Do they not see that we have established a safe sanctuary while people all round them are violently dispossessed? So why do they believe in falsehood and reject the blessing of God? And when we made the house a place of return, a sanctuary for mankind, they took the station of Abraham as a place of prayer. We contracted with Abraham and Ishmael, Purify my house for those who circle it, and those who stay there, and those who bow and who prostrate. As is related in the Hadith, this place's safety will also be ensured in the end times, and not even the Antichrist, the worst corrupter there has ever been, will be able to enter the region. The only place where the Antichrist will not be able to enter is Mecca and Medina. There will be no town which the Antichrist will not enter except Mecca and Medina, and there will be no entrance but the angels will be standing in rows guarding it against him. And then Medina will shake with its inhabitants thrice, and God will expel all the non-believers and the hypocrites from it. The Antichrist will come everywhere. Only the places with the four mosques